In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. All time belongs to him and all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. by his holy and glorious wounds. May Christ the Lord guard us and protect us May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds.
May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips, that you may proclaim his paschal praise worthily and well, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Exalt, let them exalt, the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, Standing in the awesome glory of this holy light, invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me the one worthy among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These, then, are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears Israel's children 
from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O wonder of your humble care for us, O love, O charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O happy fault, that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. Oh, 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 truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, 
and let it mingle with the light of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved His people, and in these the last days has sent us His Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. He called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from another. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed, the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation of every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seeds in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seeds in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed, the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night, let them mark the fixed times, the days, and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day, the lesser one to govern the night, and he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed, the third day, the fourth day. Then God said, Let the water teem with abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters 
and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the waters of the sea. Let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all, all kinds of wild creatures and animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. God said, let us make man in our image, after our, our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and, sub and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and on all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that, that has seed bearing fruit on it may be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed, since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are great indeed. You are clothed in majesty and glory, robed in light as with a cloak. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You fix the earth upon its foundation, not to be moved forever. With the ocean as with a garment you covered it, Above the mountains the water stood. Lord, Lord send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You send forth springs into the water courses that wind among the mountains. Beside them the birds of heaven dwell. From among the branches they send forth their song. Lord, Lord send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You water the mountains from your palace. The earth is replete with the fruit of your works. You raise grass for the cattle and vegetation for man's use, producing bread from the earth. Lord, let out your spirit and renew Your 
rocks, O Lord, in wisdom you have brought them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, Here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son, Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac, and two of his servants as well and with wood that he had cut for the Holocaust, he set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar, and he said to his servants, Both of you stay here with the donkey, while the boy and I go over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon Abraham took the wood of the Holocaust, and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulders, and while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked together, Isaac spoke to his father Abraham. Father, Isaac said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued, Here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the Holocaust? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the Holocaust. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son Isaac and put him on top of the wood of the altar. Then he reached out, took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called out, called to him from heaven. Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay a hand on your, on your boy, said the messenger. Do not the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you do not withhold from me your own beloved son. So Abraham looked about. He spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Abraham named the site Yahweh Yerim. Hence, people now say, on the mountain the Lord will see. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies. 
and in your descendants all nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Am I in inheritance, O Lord? You are my inheritance, O Lord. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. I set the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body too abides in confidence. Because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You will show me the path to life fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Let us pray. O God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increased the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through the Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham father of nations, as once you swore. Grant, we pray, that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, and you lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the, the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them, then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God who had been landing Israel's, has been leading Israel's camp now moved forward and went around behind them. The column of cloud also leaving the front, took its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus night passed, without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses outstretched his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept, swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, so it turned into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, 
with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots, chariots and charioteers went in after them, right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptians a force, a glance, that threw, in, threw them into a panic. And so he clogged the chariot's wheels that they could not drive, they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord to told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth, and the Egyptians, the Egyptians were fleeing head, head on towards the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flows, flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of the Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he is cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. He is my God, I praise him. The God of my Father, I extol him. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in the Lord is a warrior, Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and army he hurled into the sea. The elite of his officers were submerged in the Red Sea. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. The flood waters covered them, they sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, magnificent in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has shattered the enemy. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. You brought in the people you redeemed and planted them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place where you made your seat, O Lord, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands established. 
the Lord shall reign forever and ever. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The one who has become your husband is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. Your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, called God of all the earth. The Lord calls you back like a forsaken wife and grieved in spirit. A wife married in youth and then cast off, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandoned you, but with great tenderness, I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath, for a moment, I hid my face from you, but with enduring love, I take pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is for me like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah should never again deluge the earth. So I have sworn not to be angry with you or to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken, my love shall never leave you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord who has mercy on you. O afflicted one, storm-battered and unconsoled, I lay your pavements in, in Cornelians, and your foundations in sapphires. I will make your battlements of rubies and your gates of carbon and all your walls of precious stone. All your children shall be taught by the Lord and the great shall be the peace of your children. In justice shall you be established, far from the fear of oppression where destruction cannot come near you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I, I will, will praise you, Lord, for, for you have rescued me. me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you drew me clear and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down into the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing praise to the Lord, who is faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. 
for his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime his good will. At nightfall weeping enters in, but with the dawn rejoicing. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. You changed my mourning into dancing. O Lord my God, forever will I give you thanks. I will praise you, Lord, for For you have have rescued me. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, surpass for the honor of your name what you pledged to the patriarchs by reason of their faith, and through sacred adoption increase the children of your promise so that what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass, your church may now see in great part fulfilled. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander of nations. So shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there, till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. You will draw water joyfully, from the springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. God 
indeed is my Saviour. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Saviour. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Hear, O Israel, the commandments of life. Listen and know prudence. How is it, Israel, that you are in the land of your foes, grown old in a foreign land, defiled with the dead, accounted with those destined for the netherworld? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. Had you walked in the way of God, you would have dwelt in enduring peace. Learn where, wisdom, learn where prudence is found, where strength and where understanding, that you may also, where, are, where there are length of days in life, where the light of the eyes and peace. Who has found the place of wisdom? Who has entered into her treasuries? The one who knows all things knows her. He has probed her by his knowledge. The one who has established the earth for all time and filled it with four-footed beasts. He who dismisses the light and it departs, calls it and it obeys him trembling. Before whom the stars at their posts shine and rejoice. When he calls them, they answer, here we are, shining with the joy of their maker. Such is our God, no other is to be compared to him. He has traced out the whole way of understanding and has given her to Jacob, his servant, to Israel, his beloved son. Since then, she has appeared on earth and moved among people. 
She is the book of the precepts of God, the law that endures forever. All, all who cling to her will live, but those will die who forsake her. Turn, O Jacob, and receive her. Walk by her light towards splendor. Give not your glory to another, your privileges to an alien race. Blessed are we, O Israel, for what pleases God is known to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Lord, you have the word of everlasting life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold. Sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. Lord, you have the words of everlasting Let us pray. O God, who constantly increase your church by your call to the nations, graciously grant to those you wash clean in the waters of baptism the assurance of your unfailing protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore, I, I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that was poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, Wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name, because it was said of them, These are a people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, not for your sake do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake 
of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus, the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In heart in me, O God, create a clean heart in me, O God, a clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall return to you. Create a clean heart in me, O God, for you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a holocaust, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Let us pray. O God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation, which you planned from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up, what had become old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were, we were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our, our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then, we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no longer any power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Oh, Lord. 
gospel worthily and well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him, and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women, reply, do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus, the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful, yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to, this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I wish each of you God's blessings and peace, and especially that you will have Easter joy this day as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, and that this Easter joy will remain with you always. The Gospels give us eyewitness accounts of what happened to Jesus during these days, eyewitness accounts of those who saw Jesus' crucifixion, they saw Jesus nailed onto the cross. They saw him die on the cross, and they saw him buried. And the Gospels also give eyewitness accounts of those who saw Jesus after he rose from the dead, saw him with their own two eyes, and not only saw him, but spoke with him personally, touched him with their own hands and even ate with him. Jesus rose from the dead in his glorified body as his witnesses testify from their first-hand personal experience. And he remains with us always. Jesus is not a dead historical figure confined to the past, but he is the living Lord with whom we have a personal relationship now. Why did Jesus, the Son of God, come down from heaven to earth? 
for the salvation of the human race. By his suffering, death, and resurrection, he accomplished his work of salvation of the human race. He restored us to friendship with God by becoming the sacrifice for our sins. He is the salvation of humanity. At this Mass, we bless the water that will be used for the sacrament of baptism. And we renew the promises of our own baptism during this Mass. Why do we renew the promises of baptism at Easter? Why is baptism associated especially with the Easter season? The risen Lord is the salvation of the human race, and he accomplished that salvation through his cross and resurrection. And baptism in Christ is when we first experience that grace of salvation, that sanctifying grace of salvation. We are introduced to a new life of grace with our sins forgiven to be faithful to God's commandments at our baptism. Baptism is the first sacrament that begins the journey of salvation. And that's what Easter is all about, salvation and a new life in Christ. The risen Lord said to his disciples, go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Baptism and salvation. Baptism begins the journey of salvation. Yes, no more turning away from God. We are set on a new path of friendship with God in Jesus. So when you renew the promises of your baptism in this Easter Mass, resolve once again to remain on the journey of salvation to be faithful in serving God as a baptized Catholic Christian, following his commandments. We live as a new creation in the risen Lord Jesus, as members of his mystical body. And we bring the peace, the love, and the presence of the risen Christ to every person no matter what their needs or struggles or sufferings or sorrows or distress. And there is more than enough trial and testing that we are experiencing these days with the virus pandemic. But we remember Jesus' words, come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. It is the risen Lord Jesus who refreshes us through the Holy Spirit and makes us his messengers of peace, hope, encouragement, and new life. This is the amazing fact of history which we celebrate today and in fact which we celebrate every day in the church. Jesus rose from the dead in his glorified human body. He accomplished our eternal salvation. And he, our glorious risen Savior, remains with us now and always.
Dearly beloved, let us humbly invoke upon this font the grace of God the Almighty Father, that those who from it are born anew may be numbered among the children of adoption in Christ. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, Pray for us, holy angels of God. Pray for us, Saint John the Baptist. Pray for us, Saint Joseph. Pray for us, Saint Peter and Saint Paul. Pray for us, Saint Andrew. Pray for us, Saint John. Pray for us, Saint Mary Magdalene. Pray for us, Saint Stephen. Pray for us, Saint Ignatius of Antioch. Pray for us, Saint Lawrence. Pray for us, Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity. Pray for us, Saint Agnes. Pray for us, Saint Gregory. Pray for us, Saint Augustine. Pray for us, Saint Athanasius. Pray for us, Saint Basil. Pray for us, Saint Martin. Pray for us, Saint Benedict. Pray for us, Saint Francis and Saint Dominic. Pray for us, Saint Francis Xavier. Pray for us, Saint John Vianney. Pray for us, Saint Catherine of Siena. Pray for us, Saint Teresa of Jesus. Pray for us, all holy men and women, saints of God. Pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from all evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every sin. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from everlasting death. Lord, deliver us, we pray, by your incarnation. Lord, deliver us, we pray, by your death and resurrection. Lord, deliver us, we pray, by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, we ask to hear our prayer. Make this whole font holy by your grace for the new birth of your children. Lord, we ask to hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. 
Christ graciously hear us.
Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins. Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Jesus Christ has made each of us a new creation in himself through the graces he has granted to us of his suffering, his crucifixion, his death and resurrection. And he now intercedes for us at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Let us now offer our prayers, knowing that he hears and intercedes for us. For the church, may she be a light shining in the darkness of a world caught up in fear and despair, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world, that they will work together to bring a peace which has the gospel as its foundation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing to be born into the new life of Christ, that they will be encouraged by the example of their fellow Catholics to grow in holiness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick or isolated in this time, that Christ's passion and resurrection will bring joy and peace into their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died in the peace of Christ, especially Salvatore and Marie Tantino, for whom this must be offered, that through his passion and death, they may be brought to the glory of his resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our refuge and our strength and the source of all of our good, hear these holy prayers of your church on this Easter night 
and grant that we may fully obtain whatever we ask for in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. 
For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damon, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also, for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Mortem Tua Annunciamus Domine Et Tua celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. 
be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who do sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Amid us, we beseech you into their company not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Amen. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast Come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever.